So I'm going to go over the quick architecture of this setup and how the demo uh, will proceed. So uh, we have two options. We have the normal mode that you're used to testing with, and then we have the disaggregation mode where we're using multiple parallel machines to process the data and just use the scope as an acquisition machine. I want to draw attention to the simplicity of running this with a system you may already own. Essentially, connecting the disaggregation hardware is very simple. You connect an Ethernet cable from your scope to the disaggregation system, turn on a sw software switch within the application, and from there, you would start the disaggregation. So the software is the automated test app. We're going to be showing DisplayPort, and this will be running uh, on the scope. Okay, and anyone familiar with using the DisplayPort um, automation app will be used to this display or any of the automation apps that are supported. Um, so let's do a quick overview. Um, so we are using the Unigraph and automation that will connect. So we're connected. We're going to go to the test setup here. We're going to do four lanes. And my particular dot can only run... Um, a couple of these modes. I'm going to do the first two. We can also turn this on or off. I've turned it off for the initial testing, but that could be turned on as well. And OK. And just to be sure, um, we are testing what we want so that the uh, because it's automated, we can suppress all connection prompts uh, will be connected. So the dot is a an elite book HP. It's a, about three or four years old, and that will be our device under test. I'm going to be connected with SMA connectors through the Wilder cable. And we're also using the Unigraph controller to send the commands. And we will do being full four lane differential testing. So this will be typical of a full uh, of a run that you would do in the lab, in your lab. For selecting tests, um, these are the tests that we will be selecting. Um, I'll be selecting all of them to do the test run as well. And as you can see here, we've got the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage test, uh, eye diagram, total jitter, non-ISI, and so forth. So all of these tests that were set up initially here. Oh, yes, in the physical connection, again, we are differential probed in this case, and we're doing all four channels. So um, that's set up. And when we go to run this, we will be clicking the Run button and then waiting a number of hours uh, with the single mode to do the the testing and we'll see how much improvement and how much faster it is with disaggregation by running things in parallel. So for the disaggregation architecture, basically a chassis you're familiar with, and what we've done is we've loaded these up with embedded controllers. So each slot has an embedded controller. Um, Slot number one has the, it's going to be running the resource arbiter and we'll be able to look at the display on this. So I'm basically going to be using VNC to look at the displays of each of these. Um, the rest of them, uh, module number two, three, four, and five, I've also appropriately named them so they're easy to kind of trace through. Um, those controllers uh, will be running a copy of Offline Infinium and the DisplayPort test app. And when that's all put together, this controller basically will show the scope running. The scope is going to be kind of calling the shots as per which test to run. It goes to the resource arbiter. So the resource arbiter is running on this and the resource arbiter will, will negotiate and look for available workers and um, essentially uh, It'll be looking for available workers and we'll hand off and pull back the results from these workers. So we'll see that in action as well. So we'll kind of have a breakdown of how that works in real time. Uh, what will be immediately noticeable is basically there'll be the similar test for four lanes at a time are kind of going to be tested versus just one lane at a time. And that's where the big speed advantage comes in. So typically the way you would set it up is we're going to pull this. Um, this is the scope running. I like to pull that into the side. So scope will be running here um, and I'm going to open the other connections one for module two we'll put that up here in the corner one for module three one for module four and one for module five I'm going to resize these I like this layout because it you don't really need to see a lot that's going on here. Now we can pre-start everything or the app will start at the first time around. It just takes a little extra time. But I'm going to go um, and run the 
test compliance test app. And then I have a launcher, basically a, a batch file to launch the resource arbiter. So we're going to launch that and take a look at what's going on here. So this will do a license check. It's going to look for the modules and the scope. So as we go down here, we see starting resource arbiter, performing license check, starting the uh, tap engine, which uh, is what we're running here. Um, module two, three, four, and five are connected. Um, and the other requirements that we have there as well. Um, now there's also, uh, in addition to that, we have uh, the resource arbiters connected through localhost port 55441. And we are presented with uh, what's happening here as far as uh, the modules and the scope, and that'll have a utilization that we can uh, view as well. I like to make that a little smaller because that's not as important. Uh, when things are busy and moving along, the resource arbiter kind of shows us uh, in the command line window what's happening. Um, and then when we go to select the tests, uh, we'll take a look at that as well. As you can see up here, we have a copy of the DisplayPort test application on each of the workers that are on the top. So these are all the workers. This is the resource arbiter. This is the Dis DisplayPort app running on the scope. And when we launch this and select the tests and we uh, set the preferences to, instead of single instance to multiple instance, uh, where we connect here, we go apply, and we see there's a communication over here, lock now granted uh, and close. And then we can go ahead and launch the, um, the run. So we're going to go uh, run here. So we see in the background some, some signals being captured. Um, if we look at what's happening here initially, this, um, so we've locked basically the US resource arbiter has locked um, the scope and is communicating with it, getting it to acquire some data. Uh, and we will soon see some tests start on the other systems. An interesting thing to see in the run window, we do see the active run ID. So this is where the transactions and which machines get a particular test sent to it. And it's saying right now it's in the process of acquiring waveforms. So we always go to the scope to see what's happening there. So now the waveforms are loaded sequentially. Um, so the initial setup is a little slower than in the single mode, but once the ball gets rolling, it, it's more than two and a half times faster, almost three times faster. And we see these tests and the measurements going on uh, one after another. These are each of the lanes are being run here. Um, so, and the results are being handed back. And we also see if we go back down to the scope window in the uh, test ID and machine and the process of what's, who's got what transaction and which test ID is going in there. And now we see uh, um, requests and uh, measurement as well. So now we'll see them one after another do the eye diagram test, for instance. And I believe if you click on one of these, you can see which test was completed on each one. So that's very small. But um, so as we go along, we'll see this. So essentially, the scope and the resource arbiter uh, is basically directing traffic to and from each of these devices, um, either telling the scope to send the waveform or pull the results from there. And the scope's collecting those, and we'll be uh, sharing them at the very end of the uh, test run. Okay, we are going to be doing a speed test, a time comparison, how quickly disaggregation runs versus a single scope running the single application. So on the top, we have the disaggregation system, and on the bottom is the single scope. They're both running the same group of tests, and the test plan progress will be shown in the status bar. So right away, we see that the single scope it seems to have an edge here because uh, it's already running and capturing some waveforms, but the disaggregation system in the background is actually capturing waveforms. Now look at this at the top. We see channel by channel, so we have four lanes, and each of the four lanes of the measurements are pretty much happening simultaneously. Now, keep in mind, I have sped this up quite quickly, uh, 15 times real-time speed. So we'll get an actual uh, kind of time uh, progress comparison uh, running this method. So we see the disaggregation is handling things like the... Um, uh, jitter measurements quite easily in parallel and then handing the data back to the main app to the compliance application. The same application is running on both. So remember that the only difference is you flip the, 
the software switch in the application, and then uh, you'll connect the other hardware that's available for the tests. So we already see with disaggregation, it's probably at 30% done now, and the single scope may be uh, maybe about half that, a little less than half that. So disaggregation is really speeding along here, and that is significant um, for testing over long periods of time. So we're looking at this, and we're approaching probably the 50% mark for disaggregation of being done. We're probably at 40% right now. Uh, the single test plan is still, you know, it's probably at... Uh, maybe 20%, I'll give it that, and we're about 50% with disaggregation. So really, the, the point here is you can really see the functionality of the disaggregation and what is actually happening kind of faster than real time, so it's easier to understand what is going on and how, how much more efficient it actually is running. So let's let this run. I'm probably going to jump ahead here. And the test plan progress for disaggregation is now approaching 60%, I would say. And uh, the single scope is maybe 25%, if that. Now, depending on the tests you are running in a batch, if it's only a short run, you're not going to see much improvement with disaggregation for very, very short runs. But when you're running these longer test plans where you're running for multiple days, this is a significant improvement in performance. Now we're seeing the uh, last uh, portion of the disaggregation tests. What will happen near the end is the tests will all be accumulated and transferred um, and displayed within the compliance app on running on the scope in the disaggregation situation. Now it's almost done. This is at the one hour mark approximately. And now the test report is being generated. And we're done. So it's completed and we can see that the single scope is still uh, chugging along and still running its test plan. That's going to take, uh, you know, we're only probably at 35 40 percent if that right now so that's going to run for quite a bit longer and in the end um, the final result or the final measurement that i've got is that with disaggregation the set of tests which is essentially all the uh, two of the uh, display port compliance speeds plus the uh all the options for presets, pre-emphasis, that sort of thing. And uh, that was, they were all chosen and it took about one hour to run on the disaggregation system. On the single scope, it was about two hours and 40, two hours, 45 minutes to complete that same set of tests. So within a day, you're gonna get at least, you know, two runs. If you're running 24 hours, you're gonna get a lot more runs uh, with disaggregation and basically get your answers to your test questions that much faster.